Hello again. Um, yesterday's story about Jimmy was quite sad, so um, I thought we'll have a bit of a laugh today. Uh, well, I hope it's a laugh. I thought it was funny. Um, but today's story, I must warn you, is um, politically incorrect mentions male and female genitalia is definitely sexist and contains inappropriate references to members of the royal family <laughs> excuse me i'm making myself cough now so anyway just just advising you best not to listen if you are even the slightest bit, I think they call it snowflakeish. Snowflakeish these days. It's um, excuse me. It's a story. Uh, it's it's about me and my mate Alan Deacon, who are boys up uh, walking to school. It's a. Uh, set in about 1958-59. Me and Alan Deacon are walking to school. We're about 11 years old and uh, we've just started at the, what they call the big school. And it is big. 2,000 pupils, all boys. I don't like it much. Oh, I don't like it at all. The junior school I was at last um, only had about uh, 100, 100 or so pupils, if that. Alan and me walk up the hill towards the school. We walk backwards. We're walking backwards because we like to look at the girls who go past on their bikes. On a good day, with a strong wind in the right direction, we get to see lots of stocking tops. Sometimes one or the other of us will say that we saw a bit more than that, but it's mostly wishful things. In the, in the 50s, kids never had sex education at school. Most of what us boys knew or thought we knew about sex was um, garnered from the playground conversations with boys who didn't know anything either. Or if we were lucky, we might have um, had a look at the occasional, what they called dirty magazines in those days. The magazines in those days were heavily censored. Um, pornography and having Pornography was a very serious offence and carried heavy penalties. So we really got to see anything really horrible or nice, depending on your point of view. What we would see were the so-called art photos of nude women. You could see tits and bottoms, but the bit we really wanted to see, what we called the hairy bit or the fanny, <laughs> Sorry about that. Was always hidden or erased so that it was just a smudge. It's really annoying and it only served, of course, to make us even more curious about what it looked like. Of course, there were always some boys who liked to make out that they knew all about sex. I'm naming no names here. But I always tried my best to answer Alan's questions because he was very naive about the subject. Here, Bain, he said to me one day. What, I said. You know when you do it to a girl? Yeah, of course I do, I said. How'd you get it in? What? How'd you get it in, he says. Well, it's easy, I said. You just, you just push it in. Yeah, but how do you get it in before the spunk comes out? What? I said. 
before the spunk comes out, he says, how do you get it in? I mean, you'd have to be really quick, wouldn't you? Deacon, I says, you have to put it in first and then spunk. Yeah, he says, but how can you rub your knob when it's inside? You just have to wobble your bum up and down and then it happens, I says. How long does it take, he asked me. Well, if you're good at it, I say. It only takes a few seconds. But if you haven't had much uh, experience, it takes a bit longer, I think. Anyway, you won't be able to get spunk until you're 12 years old. I know that, he says. But I will be 12 in three months, so I need to practice a bit. Manly can spunk, he says, and he's not 12. Manly's a bleeding liar, I say. Boys can't spunk till they're 12. That's a well-known fact. What about the girl? What does she do if it takes ages? Deacon says to me. I don't know. I suppose if they get bored, they can read a book or something. Here, Bain, he says. Have you ever seen... The girl's Regina. <laughs> oh, yeah, I say, loads of times. Where do you see him? At Sunday school, I say. How many Reginas have you seen then? About four or five, I think. And uh, they ain't called Reginas. My brother told me, he says, that's what their proper name is, Reginas. No, I say, they're called Fannies. Reginas is something to do with the Queen, I think. So you, so the Queen is the only one who is allowed to call her Fanny a Regina, he says. I think so. And her servants and the Duke of Edinburgh. He can puts on a posh voice and pretends to be the Duke of Edinburgh. I say, Your Majesty, may I have a butcher's at your Regina? We both start laughing and fit to burst and keep on walking backwards, hoping for a glimpse of the elusive hairy bit. Here, Bane, he says, what, I say? What Sunday school do you go to? <laughs> Oh dear, even making me laugh, and I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> Thanks for looking in. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs>